Hello friends, I am Sunil sir and I am back with a new video. In this video I will be talking about frog. So let's first understand the classification of frog. Frog is there in NCRT but it is not there for NEET syllabus so make it very much clear. Frog belongs to kingdom Animalia. When I use this word Animalia it means that the frog is heteromorphic. They are even heterotrophic and they show locomotion. It means they can move from one place to the another. The next is phylum. When I talk about phylum, it belongs to the phylum chordata. It means the embryo stage shows the presence of notochord. Even it belongs to vertebrata because it has vertebral column. After phylum, we have class. Frog belongs to the class amphibia. When I use this word amphibia, it means what? It lives on land as well as in water and at the same time they require water for fertilization. Even small amount of water is sufficient enough for fertilization. So it belongs to the class Amphibia. After class, we are going to talk about the order. Frog belongs to the order of Anura. When I say Anura, it means tailless. So frog is the only amphibian which do not have tail. So it means tailless. After this, we have genus. Frog belongs to the genus Rana. When I use this word rana, it means that they have teeth present only in the upper jaw. So remember, rana teeth is only in the upper jaw. And last we have species. Frog belongs to the species of tigrina. Now why it is called as tigrina? Because it shows tiger-like spots on the entire body. So with this, we can come to know the scientific name of frog. So the scientific name of frog is Rana tigrina. So this is all what you should know about the classification of frog. Let's look at the life cycle of frog. How the life cycle starts in water and how it comes on land. Frogs they show metamorphosis. What do you mean by metamorphosis? The larval stage and the adult stage is totally different. So when you look at the life cycle of frog, you will understand one very important thing that the frog they will always lay egg in water it means there is external fertilization taking place whereas the male frog and the female frog they mate with each other female frog releases all the eggs in water male frog releases all the sperms in the water and finally the egg and the sperm they will attract towards each other by chemotactic movement and finally they will fertilize and there will be formation of a zygote. So this is how external fertilization takes place in case of frog. So after mating there is egg laid. So first egg, that egg will hatch out into tadpole. Slowly the tadpole will develop two legs, four limb. It will then develop the four legs, that is the hind limb. And by the help of hormone thyroxine, the tail will dissolve. It will undergo metamorphosis. So it will form froglet. And finally, froglet will develop into adult frog. Adult frog can only live on land. The froglets cannot live on land. So remember the hormone that is playing a very important role here is thyroxine, which is released from the thyroid gland and it helps in metamorphosis. What do you mean by metamorphosis? It basically means the childhood and the adulthood is totally different. They are not exactly same. So this is what you should know about the life cycle of frog. If I have to put it in order, very first I will say that mating of frog will take place in water. Frog lays the egg in water. The frog will, after laying the egg, the egg is going to hatch out into tadpole. Now this tadpole will first develop two legs, then it will develop into four legs, finally it will form froglets. So we can say tadpole changes by developing legs. Now it can be hind leg as well as four leg. The fifth point that we can say that later frog develops four leg and finally adult frog is formed. So this is how the development takes place. So remember, first what develops is the foreleg, hind leg and then comes the foreleg. So first is the development of hind leg, 
second is the development of the foreleg when they are in the tadpole stage they respire through gills and when they are adult they respire by the help of lungs now let's look at the external morphology of frog so here you can see i have made one frog now first we have to understand certain important characteristics of frog very first i will say that the frog is divided into two parts the body is divided into the head and the trunk it means frog has no neck like we move our neck right and left frog cannot move its neck because neck is absent so the body is divided into head and trunk and there is no neck present in frog when you look at the body the body is triangular it shows you can say short narrow anterior end and broad posterior end so when you look at the frog's body the anterior end is narrow and the posterior end is broad frog the dorsal side it has patches which is green with black spots that's why the name has been given as tigrina but the when you look at the ventral side of the frog it appears to be totally whitish or i can say it is pale yellow in color when we look at the symmetry the frog shows bilateral symmetry it means it can be divided into two equal half from one axis it is triploblastic in nature having three germ layers it is coelomate it means it has well developed true body cavity the triploblastic means it has all the three germ layers ectoderm endoderm and the mesoderm body of the frog is slimy slimy means that their body is slippery it is highly vascular frog is the most poisonous animal available on this earth most poisonous not venomous venomous is snake frog has no exoskeleton no hair no nail present frogs they have endoskeleton which is made up of bones and cartilage when you look at the male and the female frog you will understand that the male frog is quite smaller in size and it has a vocal sac when i say vocal sac it means it has the ability to produce sound in animal world it is only in frog where the female has no vocal sac and female cannot speak the male frog has well developed vocal sac to produce sound the croaking sound that is produced by the male frog is to attract the female at the time of mating so it is one of the very interesting fun fact that in frog world the females are on mute mode and the males they keep on croaking they keep on producing the croaking sound to attract the female let's look at the diagram of the frog with the help of the diagram we are going to study the entire external morphology of frog so very first part that we are going to study is the head of the frog so when you talk about head what we have to write about head we will say that the head is flat it is triangular in shape and it has a pointed apex this is the first part in external morphology it has snout snout is nothing but the nose part like we have nose the external opening it is called as nare even in frog also they have nostril or the nare that is helping in exchange of gases or breathing the second part is with respect to snout snout has small opening that opening is called as nare which is externally present so it is called as external nare and what is the role of this external nare it helps in breathing or exchange of gases when the frog is on land the next part of the frog is eye the eye of the frog is quite large huge it is prominent and it can be pulled back in the socket the most important part for frogs are you need to understand that frogs they don't have neck as a result they cannot bend their head right or left side so they make use of the eye the eye is a bit flexible it can move towards right side as well as left side so i can say that the eye can be pulled in a socket and this eye is a compensation for the neck frogs consist of two eyelids the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid when i talk about upper eyelid as you can see it is quite bulging out it is prominent 
it is thick and it is immovable so the upper eyelid of the frog is thick fixed and immovable then we have the lower eyelid of the frog so the lower of the eyelid of the frog is thin and it is movable the most important part that is present in the frog is the nictitating membrane what is the nictitating membrane i can say it is the third eyelid or the third membrane so lower eyelid is thin and movable the transparent covering that is seen on the eyeball is called as nictitating membrane the nictitating membrane of the frog is considered as the third eyelid it is vestigial in case of humans and this third eyelid helps the frog when they are swimming in the water or they are floating so that they can see even in the water behind this eye you see a brown colored spot the spot that is visible this spot is called as brown spot and near this brown spot we have tympanic membrane tympanic membrane is also called as the ear drum of the frog frogs don't have external ear like we have this tympanic membrane is meant for hearing catching the sound so when we talk about tympanum remember in frog external ears are absent below the eye tympanum is present and this tympanum has circular oblique membrane after the tympanum we are going to talk about the legs of the frog so this is the fore limb or even it is called as fore leg of the frog even it is called as fore limb this fore leg or the fore limb is meant for just support frogs have a stronger hind limb than the fore limb it is also called as upper arm it is also called as fore arm even it is called as hand or manus this fore limb or the fore leg consists of nuptial pad and the role of the nuptial pad is to hold the female when the frog is mating so nuptial pad is basically meant for grip or holding the female the thumb that is present in the fore leg is vestigial in case of frog the next part is the hind limb or even it is called as hind leg the hind leg is longer than the fore leg and most important the frogs they have stronger hind leg than the fore leg so it is larger than the fore leg that is hind leg the upper region is called as thigh the lower region is called as shank and they have ankle present plus it has a wide foot the foot shows the presence of web and this web is very much important in frog it helps in swimming so remember for hind leg it is larger than fore leg upper thigh region lower leg is called as shank they have angle on the long foot so if i draw the hind leg of the frog so it appears somewhat like this so this thicker one i call it as the thigh the lower one is called as shank then we have the ankle and then we draw these digits they have five digits present but these digits they sh they are showing the presence of web like in the duck we see webs present in the leg same type of web is present in the frog's hind leg also that helps them in swimming so let us do the labeling of this hind leg of the frog so this is the thigh region this becomes the shank region there is ankle and finally we have the long foot and this foot shows the presence of web pad for swimming the next important part of the frog's body is you see the hump present on the dorsal side of the frog's body you are going to see the hump this small projection which is protruding out it is called as the hump and this hump is present in frog the ventral side of the frog shows a belly or even it is called as abdomen 
बिटवीन द हाइंड लेग देर इज अ स्मॉल ओपनिंग दैट ओपनिंग इज कॉल्ड एज क्लोएकल अपर्चर सो वेन यू टॉक अबाउट क्लोएकल अपर्चर वी कैन से द क्लोएकल अपर्चर इज अ नैरो स्लिट लाइक ओपनिंग एंड दिस नैरो स्लिट लाइक ओपनिंग इट इज बिटवीन द टू हाइंड लेग्स सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट फ्रॉग दैट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड इन एक्सटर्नल मॉर्फोलॉजी हो फ्रेंड्स यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ फ्रॉग इफ यू आर न्यू टू द चैनल डोंट फॉर्गेट टू सब्सक्राइब एंड डोंट फॉर्गेट टू गिव अ लाइक टू दीडियो दिस इज सुनील सर सेंग गुड बाय टू यू थैंक यू वेरी मच